I know you. You know me? Yeah. Wait, wait. How is everyone? Good. Woo Good. Good. So I'm a little nervous tonight. Like, I don't think your fingernails can sweat, but I'm pretty sure mine are right now. So I don't think that's normal. Um, anyways, tonight I'm going to be talking about overcomers. And a lot of stories from the Bible and people in the Bible, um, pretty much like throughout the whole Bible, there are characters and people in there that are overcomers. My story is kind of uh, similar to a lot of those, um, as I'm sure a lot of your stories are. But um, I guess I'm just going to talk uh, a little bit about my story tonight and about stories from the Bible and different people and characters, and then we'll kind of just end off in a really cool video that um, is the Anima series. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that or not, but um, we'll play that. It's one of my favorites. Um, it kind of brings everything together, wraps up my message really well. So um, some of the overcomers in the Bible, I'm talking about Joseph. Many of you probably already heard of this. It's pretty known um, in the book of Genesis. He had 11 brothers. They all hated him. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. He was falsely accused. Um, he was in prison. And then from that, he became a ruler of Egypt and saved his nation. Um, Job, from the book of Job, he, he uh, was a wealthy man. He lost all his animals, all his farmland, and his wealth. His children were killed. He became sick, and all his friends and his wife told him to curse God and die. Yet, he still sought after, sought after God, and he um, would refuse to deny God. David and 1 Samuel. David was from a nobody family. He was a small shepherd boy. Yet, he was the, um, was the boy that stood up against the giant Goliath with his slingshot. I'm sure that's probably one of the most famous, uh, well-known books in the Bible. Um, he was an adulterer and made many mistakes, yet he was known as the man after God's own heart. Uh, Gideon, he was the weakest of his family. Um, we kind of talked about this, I think, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Um, he had an army of 300, and he defeated the huge um, Mennonite army to free Israel. Now, I think of Gideon, like, I don't know about you guys, but when I like, think of Gideon, I think of like this little guy, and he's just like, up here and he's shaking, he's got this big old helmet on his, and his head's too small for the helmet. And like, he's like, come on guys, I got like 300 people, you guys wanna come fight with me? And everyone's like, oh yeah, sure dude, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna fight with you. Like, we're gonna get crushed by those guys. You see the size of those guys? And there's like 300 of them. Uh, or 3,000 of them, excuse me. But uh, I just love those stories because I love how God uses like the most unlikely people unlikely situations just to further his kingdom. How uh, people that would, they're like the most unexpected people to be used. And uh, God uses those events in their people's lives, the situations, the struggles, the hurts, and everything that the devil uses against you to destroy you, like God uses for the good, to save others and to further his kingdom. Uh, one of the things that Joseph says, um, if you want to pull that up, Brooklyn, verse... In Genesis 50, 20. Uh, this is when Joseph is his brothers come, and um, this is when he's the leader of Egypt. And he says to him, You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many. I think that's just amazing. Like God, everything like the devil wanted to use to destroy Joseph. Like, everything that was bad happening in his life. And God, like, just flipped that around and used that for good. And there's so many stories like that. I'm going to talk a little bit about my story, kind of an overview. Um, I came from a pretty dysfunctional family. And some of you are like, yeah, uh, we all kind of did. Like, you think your family's pretty dysfunctional, maybe. But what I, be, what I mean by dysfunctional, I mean, like, I came from a family... Uh, they use a lot of drugs. Um, alcohol addictions were very common. I had a lot of relatives um, with mental illness, uh, in and out of prison and jail. Some of my uncles I never met until I was about 20 years old, um, just because they were in prison. My parents fought all the time. 
uh, pretty much that's what was my memories of growing up is like my parents just fought all the time. Um, they couldn't even speak to each other without fighting. Uh, they went through a divorce when I was eight years old and that was really tough on me. Um, there was a lot of financial instability. Money was always a problem. That was one of the main things that they fought about. And uh, a lot of bankruptcy um, that happened um, financially, like losing house, um, not being able to pay bills, things like that. And that was really hard. I had, uh, my parents made a lot of decisions in my life like that affected me. And I had no control over that. Um, so that was really difficult and like caused me a lot of pain, like my brothers and sisters and stuff. And I grew up believing hurtful lies that were spoken over me by family members. Um, that's something that I like still struggle with today. And I couldn't really fathom that the people that were supposed to care about me the most were the ones who were, were saying those things about me and saying things like that and just tearing me down. Uh, I also had a lot of anxiety and fears as a child. Um, just standing up here right now and speaking is like a huge, huge step. Like, you'll understand more as I go through my story that it's quite a miracle, actually. Um, I had a lot of anxiety. I had severe anxiety disorder um, that was later discovered and a whole issue, issues that came with that. And one of my biggest fears was going to school um, and just going into public areas. Anywhere with a lot of people, like, I couldn't handle it. Um, I'd literally have to get, like, dragged to school every day. Like, it got to the point where I had to be homeschooled for a year because there was really no other option. So I had a lot of isolation. I felt kind of like a freak because nobody understood what was going on in my life. Um, I didn't even understand myself. Um, at an early age, I had feelings of just wanting to, wanting to be gone, be dead. I'd often go to bed and hope that the next day like, I wouldn't wake up just so I didn't have to go through it again. Um, another fear that came along that was really hard in my life was probably around fourth grade. My father had a severe um, heart attack and he, it's pretty much a miracle that he's living. He had what's called a widow's heart attack where you go to bed, or you sleep and you don't wake up. Like you just have a heart attack and you're done. He ended up waking up in the middle of the night Oh, got into the hospital. They couldn't find out where he was, like, where the clog was in his heart. Luckily, like, by the grace of God, there was a surgeon there. He was one of the top in the world, and he was there that week at Mayo. He found the clog, undid it. Like, my dad has, like, seven stents in his heart to this day. And uh, so that was, like, a really big fear of mine that my dad, like, one day I'd come home and my dad would, would not be there. Like, he'd be gone. Um, as I got older, talking more like middle school age, it's just kind of an awkward age. Some of you that are there, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, or went through it. Um, I turned more into like a rebellious kid. I did whatever I wanted to. Um, I was mischievous. I had a lot of vulgar language. I was angry. I was angry at a lot of people. Uh, I was very physically aggressive to people. Like, I used to make boys cry all the time. <laughs> Yeah, like, see, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no. And, like, I would arm wrestle kids at school. It like, didn't matter who they were. And I would just, I wouldn't even beat them. I would demolish them in front of everyone. It was just, like, an embarrassing moment. I don't know why anyone accepted that challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, this boy, I'm going to go off on a trail here, but it's kind of funny. This boy wanted to arm wrestle me. He was way bigger than me, probably, like, twice the size of me. Uh, a little younger than me. Wanted to arm wrestle in front of all these people. And I go, are you sure? And he's like, yeah. I, I, just, I just crushed him in front of everyone. And then, on top of that, he wanted to arm wrestle again in front of everyone. And I was like, okay, dude, you, you, you already got beat, and now you want to go again in front of everyone and get beat a second time? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I, I just crushed him again. <laughs> Let's just say that that poor kid, I felt bad after <laughs> Yeah, he probably never forgot that. Um, I, uh, growing up, I went to church with my family, but it was really like more or less a tradition. Uh, we didn't really practice anything um, that the church taught. Uh, we would fight all the way there. We'd fight all the way back. Uh, I had a pretty uh, negative 
attitude towards church. I thought it was really boring. I thought, uh, that's a waste of time. That's full of hypocrites. Why would I want to be around more of those people like my parents? Um, they just come here and, and are fake. Um, I was like, I don't need any of that. I also thought I couldn't relate to anyone. I was really big into music, and I was like, one day my mom's just like, you should just come to church. Like, they have really good music. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure none of those people are going to relate to me. I'll probably sit down, and if I ask somebody about the rapper Eminem, they probably would think it's the chocolate candy you ate. And I just don't think I'm going to put myself into that. Um, but I, uh, I had a belief in a God. I just didn't know exactly the character of that God. Um, but uh, I would pray every once in a while. I just didn't know what God I was praying to. Um, I used uh, sports and art as a main outlet to escape. Uh, I would flee when anything happened and, and like any controversy, like I would just leave and do my own thing. I wouldn't talk about anything ever. Like I'd keep it all bottled in. Like I said, I'd just do whatever I wanted when I wanted. Hang out with friends. Like my parents had their own issues where they weren't even really concerned about me. Like. I mean, I think they cared about me, but they had so much other stuff going on, like, they didn't worry about me that much. Um, so I relied a lot on myself. I relied a lot on my siblings. I come from, a, I'm the youngest of three. I have an older brother and sister. And now, uh, recently, well, I have a half-sister who's nine and another sister who's five. So, but my older sister and brother are, like, the ones that I lean on all the time. They were always there for me. So that's basically what I relied on was myself and my brothers and sisters. Um, fast forwarding a little more, more into high school, um, some early college. I really focused on school. That was my main goal. Like I had to be successful. If I wanted to be anything in life, like that's what I had to focus on. Try to get some more of my stuff together. Like got in trouble less. Um, I did a lot of sports and art. And those seemed to be the things that I had the most control over, so that's the things that I cling to. Because I felt like they wouldn't really let me down. Um, by ninth grade, my anxiety turned more into depression. That was probably like the hardest part and my lowest part in life. I felt like I had no friends. Um, I didn't have any real friends. Um, nobody really cared about me. Like It didn't matter if I was here or, or, or dead. Um, it was a night of deciding I had two options. Like I was going to end it all or God was going to um, was going to tell me that he was that he was true, like that he, there was a real God. And I was pleading with God that night and I was sobbing and I was on my knees. And I remember asking God like, "Why would you create me to put me through so much pain?" And I asked him, God, you got to help me because I don't have anything left. I go, this is the end. Like, either prove yourself or, or I'm done. Like, I'm out. Um, and I asked him, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. But you got to make yourself true to me. That night, like, I can't even really describe to you. Like, words don't, words don't even describe this. But like there was a peace around me, like I just felt like somebody was hugging me. And I stopped sobbing. And I knew right there, like, God's real. Like this this is real. Um, from that time on, really. And it sounds kind of cliche, but that's the only way I can describe it to you guys. Um, there's a verse, Brooklyn, if you want to put the next one up. Second Corinthians 12, 8 through 9. This is Paul talking about um we're not exactly sure about what he's talking about, his struggle, but he asked the Lord three times to take it away from him. It says, three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And I think that is really like just key to my story because at my lowest point, that is where his power showed. Like I had to be extremely down to the bottom before I could get up. I started going to church, uh, attending youth group, um, asked God, started praying for good friends, sent two good friends my way, um, 
I went to church and pretty often. 17, I was age 17 and I got baptized at Cornerstone here. It was a big deal. I was just like on fire for God and just ready, just ready for whatever he had for me. But there was a misconception that I had. I thought that life's hard situations would go away after that. Um, but in reality, like my home life probably got the worst that I ever did. My best friends moved away. I slowly started taking away from God. I was hanging out with people that I shouldn't have. And instead of affecting them um, positively, they were affecting me negatively. Um, I struggled back and forth with depression and a lot of fear in my life. Eventually, after uh, I got done with college here at Riverland for two years, I transferred to North Central University, and that was really where I uh, kind of got back on track. Um, I had really good friends that built me up, and my re relationship with God was restored. Um, but uh, things at home weren't very good, and after semester, I headed back home um, just to help with my dad. He was going through another divorce. Um, we're dealing with some addictions, some um, different things with my stepmother, um, and trouble with the law. Just it's it's really endless the list here. Um, but my whole point here is like I was beat down, I was maimed, but through Christ I continue to grow, and like the walls just kept they they continue to be broken down in my life. Um, Things are not always perfect, and God never promised us that, that it, they would be perfect in this world. Um, in John 16.33, I'm sure you guys know this. Anybody know this? Anyone? Anyone? 16.33? John? No? Okay. <laughs> Jesus is speaking, and he says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Like, he's never promised us, like, we're going to have a perfect, easy, awesome life here on earth. Like, but he, he always promises that he's never going to leave us. And that he has overcome the world. Like, what more can you do? He's already done it all. So my situations in life didn't get um, much easier. Um, but God continues to love me and encourage me, put people in my life that encourage me. And that even though I fail, which I do a lot, like he still loves me. Um, and when I feel like I'm not worthy of love, I'm always going to be worthy of love. Like he tells me that every day. And that he's the person that I depend on every single day. So previously, um, I couldn't depend on anyone, I felt like. Like only myself. But now like, I just depend on him completely and every single day. Um, some of the things... Just making a list here like, of the things I've overcome in my life. First of all, I'm like standing up here right now speaking to you guys, which is pretty crazy because if I would have told maybe somebody uh, 10 years ago about this, I mean, like doctors or just other people <laughs> that said that they weren't even sure I was going to make it through, through school, like it was going to be insane if I made it through school, just with the things I was dealing with. But uh, I'm standing up here talking to you guys. I'm here. Yeah, I'm just here. Uh, I'm beating anxiety and fears right now as I stand before you. Yeah. Um, I now work at a place that I feared the most. I work, I work at a school. Yeah. <laughs> How like, that's probably like the last place I thought I was going to be. I was so ready to get out of there, and now I'm back. And I'm hoping kids like that struggle with the same things that I did. Like, what the devil meant to destroy me is what I'm using to yep, build the kingdom exactly of God right. and to help others. Like, yep. that's, a, that's a story within itself of overcoming right there. Mm -hmm. um, those people that were bad influence on me, that I hung out with, actually recently, a lot of them I brought to church. Good. So all their negativity that influenced me, like, I just built myself back up yeah. in Christ and yeah. built my relationship back up, and I'm influencing them positively. Like, they're giving up alcohol. They're giving up drugs. They're coming to church to me with me. Um, they came to a young adults group recently. Like, I just get to talk with them, and, like, it's, it's amazing how that works. Um, another verse that I have that I really live by, I love this verse. It's 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. 
It says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. And uh, I just love that verse. Like you can, you can, you can knock me down a hundred times. Like I'm gonna keep getting up. That's basically what that's saying. Yeah. Um, I think He has given each one of you a spirit of overcoming, yes. and I see it in each one of you. And I don't know about what's going on in your life or what's to come, but like God knows, and I just want you to know that like He cares about you. Leaders here care about you. People do care about you. And like no matter what you're going through, like He's there for you. If you need to search him out, like I, I think that's something that you really need to do. Um, I like how God always uses like people that are just so unlikely. Like the odds, everything's against them. Like things, maybe things that they have choices they have made, or people have made that affect them, or just like the way that the deck was uh, handed to them, like just the way their family is, maybe. Like, I think about all the stories where people come from these unlikely families. Like, Jesus, he came as a human to just, like, an average middle-class family. Like, his dad, Joseph, and his mom, Mary. Like, they were nobodies, and yet he was our savior of the world. Yeah. That is just crazy to me. Um, I have a video that I'm going to show. It's by the Animal Series. You should probably check this out. They make a lot of other videos. Um, this one's called The Walls, and it's going to talk a little bit about some of the characters from the Bible that I uh, talked about, but it kind of sums everything up. So we'll watch this, and then I uh, have a little bit more to share with you, um, and then I'll pray, and we can end there. So if you want to play that, Brooklyn.